This little dog's really enjoying fun with the little toy attached to the end of a flirt stick. The flirt stick looks like a riding crop with a, a piece of string or cord attached to the end. They are proper dog toys. However, and, and they're strong, um, you know, they're quite resilient to, to, to strong jaws and pulling. However, it's really important that your dog has a positive emotional response to your um, training gear. So in this case, a long stick, a lot of dogs might find threatening. So um, this little dog clearly really enjoys the training session with this. And, you know, she doesn't care less whether I'm touching her on her body with the stick or the um, uh, cord. So she's very happy with about this. So do be sure to check that any dog that you decide to play a game with these sort of um, tools, or if your clients would like to try working with one of these to um, make sure that they build up a positive emotional response to the equipment first. Some dogs might not mind, but I would be very, you know, keen um, to, to, to do that protocol first. Good girly. Okay, so this is the favorite toy, <laughs> as you can see. Anyway, this is how I taught my weights, okay? So I just hold the toy up and bring it down all the while the dog maintains the sit position, okay? When I think she's done it for long enough, free. I say my free word and then I allow her to have the toy. I'm gonna to play it low key in the early days because I want to test how capable she is at maintaining a sit in a lower state of arousal. So it doesn't take much to push her through the roof with her ability to get high as a kite. So um, what I would like to do is work that as if it was a ladder. So you've got a low level of arousal where the dog's just kind of got up and everything's okay and normal to the really high state where the dog is going completely bonkers and can't even think. So if you work on each of those levels, you'll find that um, your dog will be able to access the information of your said cue like um, weight or um, calling them to come to you and so on any recalls um, when they're in a high state of arousal if you practice on all these levels so i'm going to get this back now and i'm going to cheat i'm going to do it the fast way which is basically dropping food at the same time as using my leave it word let go okay i need to work on that okay so here it comes again and she should be able to maintain an SIT, but it's her choice. I'm not going to ask for it. Free. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just ramp it up a little bit. So a little bit more movement from my arms this time. So that's nice and fun, but not too jolly. Good girl. Really good. Okay, so I'm going to cheat again. My leave it cue, good girly. So you can see how easy it is to get your pocket to cue behaviours because I just did that. So um, I'm always on people for that. So um, it's important that they let go of these things though because um, this is quite a high value toy. So I'm just going to move her sideways a little bit so you can see her better. Good. Okay. So she, she should realise that sitting is what brings the toy down from the sky. Free. Notice I said free a bit earlier then, purely because the toy was actually on the ground. I don't, didn't expect her to maintain her sit when the toy was that accessible. So I don't want to chance my luck because these are quite difficult to whip up off the ground. Um, in the um, in the middle of the dog chasing and so on, and she's pretty quick to be fair. Let go, good girl. So again, use those as training opportunities. She had let go, so I just quickly pop my cue in to make sure that things were done a little bit more on my terms. So these games are more fun if they got rules. Okay, so here he comes again. She probably maintain an SIT. Okay, so um, just just 
out of interest, I hold this handle. This, this is just like a riding crop with a string on the end and the woolly treat and a uh, woolly toy on the end. Um, I hold it very loosely in my hand. So if they are traveling and I know that they're going to grab it, which obviously they are, especially a terrier, I will be ready to let go with this. She's already used to this toy. She doesn't care less about it, doesn't frighten her in any way. So um, I let go of it purely because I don't want her to yank her neck should she grab it and then jackknife her head um, in the motion of driving towards grabbing it. Okay, let go. Good girly, really nice. Okay, we play that game again. And so again, how many, I'd say that was level four on your level of one to 10 of a really crazy dog from going from asleep to crazy, a scale of one to 10, I'd say that was a four, okay? So she can easily send herself into a frenzy. It doesn't take any effort from me. So um, let's see if she can do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna wait her out for an SIT. So this is a no rule situation, it's her choice. She's controlling her impulses to grab a toy. So she knows if I go like that, chances are if she does an SIT, she knows it's gonna come down. She's not daft. So she's seen that. So I'm bringing in a bit of movement now. Okay, so that's distracting in itself. If I drop this on the floor now, chances are she might get up. I'm going to be quick about this. So there's a distraction. So I've got a sit weight. I haven't even asked for a weight yet. A little bit of movement from it. Free! <laughs> Good girl. So these are far more fun than your usual sit weights where you're just going over, paying to the mouth, and so on and so on. They're very, very solid ways of training a dog. However, when they're young, they, you won't hold their interest for very long. So I do train that way as well, don't get me wrong, but I do enjoy playing this way because it's usually their lack of impulse control that breaks them out of a sit anyway. So um, this is the sort of thing that I like to train for, for dog sport because you want them super motivated and super attentive and then you can train their sort of quieter way as well and then you've um, then you've captured the, the, the thinking part of their brain as well whereas this they're really ready to hear that one word that frees them up to go and get their toy okay so let go notice I add my let go cue when her mouth is empty Okay, I'm going to bring in a little bit of movement now. Okay, so let's have a look and see. So if my hand is up high, she knows that she ends up in a sit because that's what brings my hand down because I've done it immediately every single time training her this way. So I'm going to drop it on the floor and I'm going to move it a little bit more this time. Three. <laughs> so she ran to a moving toy. So I'm just bringing these little levels up one by one and really carefully monitoring what her body's doing. So um, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but she is literally trembling with delight to be released to the toy. Okay, so I'm not going too bonkers again because I've introduced some movement. Uh, the excitement's already up there because I made the toy move. So I don't want to then have an almighty game um, which would bring her even higher. So, because I'm working on this systematically, I'm being really careful about this. Let go. Good. Find him. Good girly. Let's let her find that. And again, if they're sniffing, you're bringing the arousal levels down a job. Ready? Susie girl. Come on, buddy. <laughs> she's found it right okay okay so we brought her brain down a drop so let's start again so i'm going to set her up over here this time okay so my hands up high i'm going to walk away from her i can see her in the camera so i'm going to do my best to pick it up should she move free <laughs> good girly so this is a good way to cheat on them when you're doing your obedience because you can see them um, behind you and they suddenly think you've got eyes in the back of your head, which is always handy because they then tend to um, do things as you've asked rather than waiting for you to turn away. Good girl. Really nice. 
Good girl. Well done. Let go. Okay. So I've got high value food there. That's beef I'm throwing. Um, purely because this toy is such high value to her. I don't think she would give it up for a bit of biscuit. So we'll do this one more time and we'll work on this to see where you can pop your weight cue in. Okay. So just get her interest over here for a second so you can see her. See you, girl. Girly. Okay. So bring that up high. She knows that means that I'm going to start bringing it down if I see her sit. It means that I'm going to bring the toy down. So I, this is my big window to put my weight cue in. So what I'm going to do is say wait after she's chosen to sit. Ready? Good girl. Wait. Three. <laughs> Good girly. Good girl. Really nice. Let go. Okay, we'll do that one more time so you can see that little window when you can put your cue in so it comes up high. Wait. Breathe. <laughs> good girl. Really good. Really good. So basically the flip side of waiting is your release cue. So mine for that exercise was free. And um, if you haven't got a flip side to your sit and wait and you're just going over there and you're paying to the mouth and paying to the mouth and paying to the mouth, firstly, it could get a little bit boring. And secondly, um, you've then got to introduce all your distractions and so on. So here we're working with the impulses first, which is your reflexes and the emotional state. Um, and then we can engage the brain a little bit more later on when the skill is there. So I've just started doing that now by adding my weight cue, okay? Um, and then weight has a meaning because I'd already got five or so seconds duration um, with the distractor before I've even started my weight exercises, which is ideal. Good girly, get it way! Good girl, good. So now I can amplify her mood let her end the session on a complete nutter high and um, she'll have um, that in her mind when she goes to sleep in a minute. Good girl. Really good. Good girly. So generally speaking if I'm doing something like this I'd be doing it for not so long but because I've had a lot of breaks talking to the camera then um, obviously she's not been full on working right through but I'd say just a couple of minutes here and there, maybe five minutes at the most. You've heard my timer go off, so I've always got a timer. And it's just worth your while then, because um, anything that you've taught them in a short space of time, a um, little bit of play afterwards, a gentle walk or a relaxation time, and um, will consolidate the learning that you've just done, which is ideal. Have fun with that. Good girly. Let go. Whoosh. I'm going to put it away before she grabs it. 